Hello, today we're going to be talking about the role that a soldier can take on as an initiator, the importance of initiating when it comes to team play, and the importance of taking on many roles. Now like all my other recent videos, I'm going to assume that you know the basics of soldier. The point of these videos is not to instruct a rigid way of playing certain classes like other shitty guides, but to teach a foundation to learn upon, and to be able to adapt it to your playstyle. Now I'm also going to assume that you know how to rocket jump, since there's going to be a lot of that in this video. If you need help with rocket jumping, the thing that helped me improve the most was to just spend a little time on jump servers, even doing basic maps like jump beef will bring you a long way. Now I mentioned in previous videos the importance of staying alive, holding your ground, and applying damage. Now there are certain situations where you, as a soldier, need to serve another role, which is the role of an initiator. Basically you want to serve as a distraction and apply as much damage as you can while the rest of your team follows up on what you did. Now, a very good yet simple example of initiation is at the start of a round, both teams arrive at mid at roughly the exact same time. If both teams play passive behind the point, pretty much nothing is going to happen except for the possible mistake leading to either team taking the point. When I review demos of competitive games, I often see teams squirming around not really sure what to do and then die when they get caught off guard. Now, as a soldier, you have the super magical power to often only use one rocket to fly across the point and use the rest of your rockets to make the other team eat damage. Now, this is called an initiation. Basically, a soldier is being used as a distraction while your team moves in very quickly to clean up. Now, it's very hard to handle a soldier screwing around behind you, picking off your classes while also trying to manage the threat of a team moving across point. This is why the importance of a distraction plays such a critical role in successful pushes. The more annoying you can be as a soldier when it comes to pushes, the better your team will be at catching their players off guard and killing them easily. Now this may sound rather simple, but in application, it's a little bit more complicated than that. For example, learning the timing of initiation is very, very important. If you go in too early, you're simply going to die and the other team will focus all their attention somewhere else. If you go in too late, the other team might have already killed all your team. Now, initiating is not bound to mid-fights either. It's often the case for a soldier to spearhead a push to another point, or create some space by dealing damage on last. Again, it's a little difficult to understand timings at first, since going in at the wrong time can ruin a push for your team, but it's very critical to becoming a better player and getting better team cohesion. Now, something that's very overlooked is the fact that not every good play is a flashy one. For example, it's possible that you do nothing at all, and yet the play is considered very good. Now here's going to be one example where, to regular players, it may seem like a bad play, but in fact, it's a very good one. Now this is just a simple clip of me doing a mid-fight on Vida. Here I'm just whipping my team to mid, and my goal is to initiate by killing their sniper. Now here I do a jump, but I get bumped in by their soldiers, so it kind of fails. Now I get one rocket into their sniper, another one, but it doesn't kill him. Now here, four people come behind to chase me. I get nothing done, but in the end, this is a really good play. Four people chased me behind and my team was just able to walk across point and kill the heavy, heavy straggler here. Okay, so now that we've covered initiating, let's cover a similar aspect of soldier, which is the utility to jump around, create space, and assume multiple roles. I'm going to go through this swift water clip and give you guys my thought process and why being able to fill multiple roles is important. So I'm just going to go through my thought process here. I'm supposed to be guarding that catwalk in this house, and I come across an engineer and his teleporter. I saw the medic escape there, but it's not really a big deal. Um, I also see this soldier there, but he doesn't seem to notice me. I get, I get kind of lucky with that engineer since normal people don't really build that. But anyways, now um, their sniper's been giving us a little trouble, so I'm going to go deal with him. Now I'm supposed to be locking down this entire area here, and the rest of my team should be able to handle cart fairly well. But as we're going to see, it doesn't really happen, and I have to assume multiple roles here by taking like leaps and bounds as soldier, and being able to project damage everywhere on the map. Now, if they cap this point, they win because of the Highlander stopwatch rules. So I'm forced to kind of output a lot of damage on cart here because our demo isn't exactly doing his job. He's off guarding a little flank house up to the side, but that's fine. Um, I have to use my jumping here to just run around the map and basically, as I said, project damage everywhere. And it's really, really annoying to play against a soldier who's very mobile like this. See, like, I was able to respond to the demo man's call that needed a little bit help on the flank. And here, I see an engineer and I'm able to respond very, very quickly to the call that he might be pushing the cart. And this is what I mean by being able to project damage and use your jumping to basically aid all situations as possible. Now, as I go through this, I'm basically locking down this staircase here, make sure they're not able to get the upper flank on us, and that's fine. Now, their scout is basically on cart here, and a lot of our players are down, so again, I have to help by doing spam damage here. And it's really hurting our team because our demo is just not being able to help out. And here, I do a pretty big misplay. I think I chased this heavy where I should have been basically staying on cart, and this just proves that not all players are perfect and we lose here. Now the point of making all these small videos is to eventually build up to an understanding of what makes great team cohesion, and what makes you a better individual player no matter what game mode you play. I'd like to really just thank everyone who's been sticking around so far, I'm really happy with the positive reaction lately. 
If you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate a like as well. Now, as a final thing, I recently revived my old community forum from two years back that was mainly used for casual discussion and some funny talk. If you're interested in dropping by, feel free to do so and just follow the link. I also stream again on weekends and I do demo reviews for everyone that really needs help. So yeah, my stream has been getting a really positive reaction too. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people enjoy it. And anyways, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.